You pay yourself first. Sets the tone for the whole month. Sets the tone for your whole day. You've done something for yourself. It's psychological. It creates great um, just inertia and momentum in one's life. Hey everyone, it's Ian. I'm back with another video about dividend investing. My name is Ian Lopuk. I'm from ppcian.com and I am passionate about investing for cash flow and dividends so that one day my passive income can cover all of my living expenses. Today, I want to discuss my automated investment strategy. It's really important for myself to pay myself first. Before I pay any bills, before I take any money and buy any items, I need to pay myself first. And what that means is I need to get money into my dividend stocks, into my investments before anything else happens. Now, let's take a step back and start with a story. I've got a bank account. I get a paycheck. It gets deposited into the bank account. If the money is there, oftentimes I'll find one, one way or another way to spend it. And I believe that this is human psychology. We've got a bank account. We've got money in there. The bills come in. You're at the store. You're, you're out there buying stuff. One way or another, if the money's there, it's easy to spend it. And so I found, at least in my personal situation, by automating my investments, by paying myself first, it is such a better way to maximize my budgeting and such a better way to get my money into dividend paying stocks that will grow, that will one day pay enough passive income to cover all my living expenses. And so what does this really mean, automated investing or paying yourself first? It sounds fancy. Well, really it's not. What it simply means is rather than have money coming into your bank account for spending, you have that money going directly into an investment vehicle. You're paying yourself first before it gets even gets into your bank account. And I'm gonna take actually two, um, two examples of this that aren't directly related to dividend growth investing, but they're, they're kind of close, um, close relatives. So the first one is a 401k plan. If, um, if you have a job at a large corporation, typically they provide an investment vehicle called a 401k. And typically the way the 401k works is this. You tell your employer, what percentage of my income? Is it 1%, 2%, 10%? What percentage of my income do I want going into the 401k? Now what's great about the 401k is once you select that percentage, the money, well one, pre-tax money goes in there, but also, the money never hits your paycheck. Never. You don't even see it. You see it on your paycheck going in the 401k, but on, on the amount of money being deposited into your bank account, it doesn't go into your bank account. It doesn't, you don't get paid that money right away. It goes into the 401k on your behalf based on the percentage allocation that you selected. This is great because the money is untouchable. You're paying yourself first. It's not very easy or practical to go into the 401k, get the money out, unless you want to pay a, a, a tax penalty uh, before you're of retirement age. And so this is an idea, this is an example of paying oneself first. Let me use another example. And so the second example is just a tax withholding. Let's say again, you work at a company and the company withholds taxes for you, hold, withhold state taxes if, you, if your state has them, federal taxes. And again, you can, you can tell your employer, hey, I know my tax bill is going to be a little bit higher because I've got a little bit of extra income from, from some other projects I work on. You can have them withhold a little bit extra. Even if you don't have an employer, maybe you're self-employed, but you use a payroll system, you can put in the payroll system how much extra money you want withheld. Again, an, an example of paying oneself first in a sense that, yeah, it's going to the government, but you're going to have to pay that money anyways. So why not, before it even hits your bank account, before it even hits your paycheck, it goes directly into your withholdings. And so at the end of the year, when tax time comes around, you've saved enough. You've, um, you've made the great decision to save enough. So rather than having the money go in your bank account and risk spending it on all kinds of stuff, you have it going to where it needs to go. So those are two examples of paying oneself first. They're kind of traditional examples, not dividend growth investing. Let's shift gears now to dividend growth investing. So in the world of dividend growth investing, how can one automate their investments? How can one pay themselves first? Well, 
there are there are really uh, two ways to do this, and there are uh, kind of a combination of the ways. Uh, honestly, maybe the best way to do it. But let me just start with the basics. Dividend reinvestment plans. I've done videos on these on YouTube. I really like dividend reinvestment plans. They're great. You can set up a dividend reinvestment plan so that every month, over time, it deposits money. It buys stock. And you can do this with as little as $25, $50, sometimes commission-free, that each month you're buying this stock. It'll buy it on the same date typically each month. It will buy fractional shares. So if the money going in isn't enough to buy a whole share, or maybe it's enough to buy like one and a half shares, it can do that. And it just keeps doing it over time. This is great because it dollar cost averages, meaning if the stock is high and, or, or if the stock is low, you're buying at all of those different points. And so it's great to, to maximize uh, or minimize rather one's uh, entry price, but also it's automation at its finest. Money is going out each month automatically. Now, of course, in this case, the money has to come from your bank account. It's not coming directly from your paycheck. So there is that, that, that time where the money comes from the paycheck, it's sitting in your bank account before it goes out into the automated investment. Now, that, that period of time creates some risk. You got that money sitting in your bank account for how many, how many days ever there are until it goes out into the dividend reinvestment plan. You, you and I, we have to be careful. We can't spend the money during those days, but that, that's the difference between the 401k example and the tax withholding examples, it's not going directly from your paycheck. However, there's a workaround here. I don't actually use this workaround because just having it go directly out, I've managed to make that work. But I want to share a workaround if you're really concerned. And maybe I'll try this one day. Maybe it's, maybe it's a better way of doing things. Once your paycheck comes into the bank account, have another bank account called your spending account. The one it comes into, maybe that's just the general account or the the uh, kind of the parent account. Once the money comes into the first account, take out whatever you need for that month, put it into another account. Only spend from the other account. The first account, you'll have some left over. Maybe that's the money then that goes out into the dividend reinvestment plans, the automated investments, paying yourself first. Maybe some of it doesn't even go out. Maybe you're trying to build up a cash buffer. That first account could be where the cash starts building. You just have to be real disciplined that each time you take money out from the first account to the second account, it's the same amount. You're not, you're not cheating yourself. You're not taking out more one month than the last to make up for overspending. You're keeping it consistent. But uh, I think the, either just using the first strategy like I do or a combination of both strategies, that's going to get most people there. It's going to get you to the finish line where you're paying yourself first, you're automating your investments in the world of dividend investing and just greater personal finance in general. However, um, okay, Here, here's um, uh, kind of shifting thoughts a little bit. Here's, here's a, fun, a fun challenge. What I have found in investing in dividends is sometimes, I think, I think most of us in the dividend community probably have gotten into this mindset one way or another, at one point or another in one's investment career. You're doing really well. You're getting really good at this stuff. Your, um, your, your portfolio is growing. And you start, inve you start automating a lot of investments, maybe even more than you can afford to do. In my opinion, it's okay to push yourself like that a little bit once in a while. And I've done this. I'm, I, I'm not actually doing it right now. I probably should be. So just filming these videos is a way to also motivate myself to, to push my limits on my dividend investing. But what I have done in my own portfolio uh, from time to time is I'll automate a little bit more, probably more than I should. And what it does is it forces me to rethink my budget because I'm like, okay, I got all this money going out of the door. I'm paying myself first on all of these stocks, a little bit more than I'm, I'm used to. It forces me on the budgeting side, okay, this is what I've got left. How can I make it work? Maybe, maybe I have to be smarter. Maybe I can go out to dinner one less time. Maybe I have to make a little bit more side income uh, some way to compensate for, for that, that loss of capital. Maybe, maybe I have to, um, who knows what, maybe I have to w figure out how to get promoted at work. Whatever it is, sometimes I believe that it is important in life 
and as an investor to step a little bit out of your comfort zone. And I like to do that sometimes through paying myself first. Look, in the worst case, well, the worst case is a, is a horrible case. You would have to take the money out of the dividend stock, but, and, and I don't advocate that. Like once I buy a dividend stock, I'm in it forever. However, what I've rationalized in my mind is sometimes I will push myself to my limits and I will automate a, a little bit over automate and it, it ends up working out. It ends up teaching me some lessons about myself and about my budgeting. That said, this strategy may not be for everyone. So really two things covered today automation, paying oneself first, and then kind of the add-on strategy of overpaying oneself first to challenge oneself. So it may be that the first strategy is really great, but the second one, I'm not quite ready for that. It may not be your thing. That is, that is great. I'm just trying to share my passion here on YouTube and things that have worked for me personally. So I do want to close out uh, with, with two thoughts. I just did a video yesterday about the topic of momentum. It's important to have momentum in dividend growth investing because one is going to be in this game for a long time. It takes 10, 20, 30 years to see the benefits of dividend growth investing, but when they come, they're huge. And automation creates momentum. If you automatically have money going into a stock each month, that's momentum. It's automated. So just think about that. As you, as you watch this video, you watch the last one, Think about how this very strategy of paying oneself first can help create momentum. I think that's really, really important. The other strategy is think about this like the gym. If you go to the gym first thing in the morning before you do anything else, or you just maybe you don't like going to the gym, you're like me, you like going running. You go running first thing in the morning before anyone else. You feel great the rest of the day. It, it sets the tone. It's amazing. Same thing with automation of investing and paying yourself first. Pay yourself first. Even if you're not a dividend growth investor, you're just a saver. Whatever your strategy is, but I, I tend to find that dividend growth investing works for me. I really like that strategy. But you pay yourself first. Sets the tone for the whole month. Sets the tone for your whole day. You've done something for yourself. It's psychological. It creates great um, just inertia and momentum in one's life. So a disclaimer before I leave today. I'm Ian Lopuk, ppcian.com. I'm just sharing my passion here on YouTube for fun, for entertainment purposes. I love investing, so I'm just sharing my own story and um, doing this for fun. I am not a licensed financial advisor, and this is not investment or financial advice, and this is not tax advice either. So if you do have any interest in investing and pursuing stocks, other investments, please go out there and speak with a licensed financial advisor first. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I've been getting so many great questions here on my YouTube channel please keep them coming because those questions fuel future topics. I've been getting a lot of new subscribers. I really thank you. I appreciate it. A lot of likes. The channel is growing and my goal is to see it reach new heights. I'm really excited about this and um, I want this message to reach as many people as possible. So thank you. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next dividend investing video.